Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we have a really special video because in front of me I have a box of helmets and weapons. But these are not normal helmets and weapons. These are custom prints by LS3D. So first of all, huge thank you to him for sending these to me to review. Um, I will put the link to his store down in the description because you're definitely going to want to go and check out all the different stuff he has. But just to convince you like 100% that you definitely need to go and check that out, let's take a closer look at what's in this box. Okay, here we are. This is the entire contents of that box. So what we have here is we have a... Gosh dang it, I forgot the name of this Spartan helmet. This is a Mark V helmet, I think? Somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm going to call it a Mark V because I forgot the name. But Mark V helmet, and we have some variations of it. So we have two normal, then we have two with a little side attachment, then two with a visor attachment, and then two with the visor attachment and the side attachment. Then over here we have the Halo Reach MP helmet. We have a normal one one with side attachments, and one with side attachments and the breather piece. And then back over here, we have ODST helmets. These are way, way more accurate than Megas. Don't get me wrong, I love Megas, just normal ODST helmets, but these are so much more accurate. You'll see that in a minute. But this one's got an attachment on the side. This one is the Halo 2 kind of uh, helmet, ODST helmet. This one is side attachment with the breather this one's just a plain odst helmet this one has the visor like brim attachment and a side attachment and this one has the like sniper attachment but it's folded down over the eyes so that's really cool not something we ever see from mega and then back here we have some weapons so we have a dmr there are two plasma rifles which are much more accurate in scale uh, than megas we have a magnum a cinder shot i think this is a cinder shot i get the cinder shot and the heat wave mixed up because i don't know if i've actually seen the heat wave i just keep pe hearing people say heat wave and then i think it's a cinder shot and then it's, people say it's a heat wave so i don't know i think it's a cinder shot then we have emil's knife in a sheath this is removable and then we have that awesome sniper rifle. We saw this in one of the flustered custom reviews. Um, and I was that was where I was wondering where it came from. It was an LS3D piece, and here it is. So let's go ahead and we will jump in a little closer and take a look at that MP helmet set. There we go. So first, my first impressions of looking at these helmets just right away as I pulled them out of the box. I looked at them and was absolutely shocked at how much detail is packed into these little things. I mean, look on the top of the helmet. Look at all of that. And then the visor. The visor has the line in it and it's really nice and sharp. On the back. I think there's a little, maybe a mold mark or something right there, but that's, that's fine. I mean, that's to be expected. We'll bring in the other one. Just, okay, so the fact that he's got the different helmets with the different attachments is really awesome. Because Mega doesn't typically do that. They don't usually give us helmets, uh, helmet variants, with the exception of ODSTs, just because there's a bunch of different ODST helmet variants, and, you know, they want to do some different things with that. I mean, we've gotten, I think, one with an antenna on the side, and the normal one, and then the one with the sniper stuff. But aside from that, Mega doesn't really do this, where they don't really give us heads with attachments. And this looks really, really nice. Absolutely fantastic. And the MP helmet is not something we have ever seen Mega do. So this one in particular is pretty cool. Personally, this one I think looks the best. The breather on the front and the little light on the side I think looks really, really nice. So let's go ahead and pop one of these helmets on a figure to see what it looks like. Okay, so this right here is what will become a Spartan 
custom using one of these heads. I'm, I haven't decided on which head I want to use yet, but we'll be using this body as the kind of test. So the one thing that I noticed first is these heads don't pop onto the Mega Constructs bodies just straight off the bat. The neck holes come with, there will be a little bit of like junk from the, the hole that you have to clean up, like excess plastic or whatever, just like dust that can come off. But it's a bit of a tight fit to actually get it on there. And it kind of, I don't want to squeeze it down too hard. So I've sanded down this ball peg a little bit. Uh, obviously not enough because I can't push this one down all the way. So that is something to be aware of that you probably won't be able to just pull this straight out of the, the package and just stick it on. And it varies. So like some of these, like this one, this one goes on a little easier than the other one. But it definitely, it looks like Mega for sure. Like it, it doesn't stand out in a bad way. Let me see if I can say this properly. So sometimes when you have like custom parts, especially custom molded parts, and you put it on the official figure, it can look weird because it'll have like too much detail or it'll just have a different style. But this this blends nicely. The armor doesn't look weird with this helmet. Um, we do have posing, which it's very tight right now, but we can move the head around. Let's see, can I get the, can I get this one on? Yeah, yeah, that one can go on. So you can move the head around pretty much as much as a, um, a normal Mega Constructs figure's head. Now, one thing that I have noticed about the LS3 prints is the head tends to sit pretty high up on the neck which in some cases that's good and it looks fine, but in some cases it looks kind of weird. So like with the Spartan, you know, they've got, they've got big shoulders and whatnot. So that's, that's fine. But there, I think he's got like a stormtrooper helmet. And I think that's one of the ones where when you put it on, there's kind of a neck on the helmet and it just looks a little tall and strange. But this one paired with the Spartan, looks really really nice i'm i'm excited to paint some of these i'm gonna have to probably hunt down some more base spartans to put these on because there's a lot of helmets to use and i definitely want to use as many as possible but i haven't decided which one i want to do first the mp is pretty cool but let's go ahead and take a look at those mark fives or whatever those helmets are Okay, so I figured it might be easier instead of just lining them up all on the ground. It might be easier if I pop them on this base Spartan to see uh, what it looks like up close. So here is the helmet, the base, just normal, no attachments. And it looks really, really nice to me. I think that this one would be really fun to paint the visor because the visor is so big that it'll kind of, the paint will go on pretty nice. Got some little vents down here. Nice detail on the side. Around to the back. I'm trying to make sure my camera doesn't defocus the helmet because the gray is a little bit hard for it to focus on. That looks really nice. It it matches, like I said, it matches the aesthetic of Mega while also being superior in terms of like how sharp the details are. That underneath the visor even has some detail. This is one of the ones that does sit up a little high on the neck. I think this is pushed down all the way. Which is kind of good because look, we can get some really nice downward movement. But if you look at him straight on it from this angle, it can look a little weird. But again, for Spartans, it's very it's a very easy problem to overlook because the Spartan shoulder pieces of their armor sticks up so much. But yeah, that looks really nice, but it's not the best it could be because we have attachments, and everybody loves attachments, right? I'm, I can't be the only one that thinks that helmets, Halo Spartan helmets, look better with attachments, right? I mean, look at this. So we have the base helmet, which looks amazing, but then we have this one, which has, what is this, a light module on the side? 
it just makes the helmet look more unique and stand out a little bit different than the other Spartans. And it just, I also have a thing for like asymmetrical armor designs. So that kind of scratches that itch for the asymmetrical armor design. And it doesn't look just tacked on at all. It looks really well done. It doesn't look like he just took a little chunk of plastic and just slapped it on there or whatever. It's really, it's well done. It's really well done. I'm quite impressed with that. But it gets even better. Here is the version of the helmet with the kind of brim attachment. It gives me kind of George vibes, like grenadier armor vibes. And that just makes the whole thing look a lot more imposing. Because look at this. So we've got this one. And it's like your normal Spartan. But then this extra piece on top really makes it look like this dude would be some sort of a heavy gunner. And that's fantastic. I love that. And again, it just it fits together really well. There's no there's no sloppiness to the attachments in the slightest, which I feel like that could be easy to do. Just, you know, you have your base helmet and you just kind of design a couple extra things to slap onto it and it looks cheap. No. Not not this piece in the slightest. It's it's it, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And then the final evolution, which might be the one I end up using, is the light attachment and the brim attachment. So there's the base one, and there's the one with both attachments. That'll probably that'll probably be the one I end up using. I think that it looks really nice with like this chest plate and stuff, and it just it looks really cool, and I think it'll be a lot of fun to paint, especially like the little module on the side. The only complaint that I can find with these helmets is like one of them had looked like a little hair that had gotten stuck in the machine during the molding or something, so it was sticking out of the middle of the visor. So I had to kind of like take an X-Acto knife and be very careful and trim it off. But other than that, I don't really have any complaints with this. Like I said, the the helmets will be a little stiff on the just base mega construct like neck parts but that's easily remedied and i think that's a that's a small a small little price to pay for having a a helmet that looks so incredibly sharp like it's really really sharp and i really like the fact that the base color is this light gray because it makes it super versatile and you could even just paint the visor and it would look pretty decent with just a painted visor. Alrighty, now let's take a look at those ODST helmets. These helmets, uh, I've had more like stiffness on the neck than the other helmets. I don't know if I sanded this one down enough. Oh, you know what? Maybe I did. That looks pretty cool. The little breather piece definitely blocks the articulation a little bit, but that's just that's just part of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start with this one right here. Look at that. You know what? I need to make sure I can stick all of these heads on the Spartan because that's just a lot better way to look at these. So the great thing about these ODST helmets is that you can use them either as just straight up ODSTs or you can stick them on a Spartan and have them be like a Helljumper Spartan. I believe you could do this in Reach. I think this is kind of what this is based off of. Because I don't think we ever see ODSTs, just normal ODSTs, with like all these attachments like this. So this is like the Spartan version, I guess. Little, I don't know what kind of attachment that is on the side. It's not lights. Maybe it's some sort of communications thing. And then we have like the hazardous environment breather on the front, which completely changes the whole look of the helmet and makes it look a lot bulkier. Now look at the visor. Look at the shaping on the visor. Look at the little line through the middle of the the helmet there look on the brim look at that look at all of the little carved lines around the back that is that is absolutely nuts that is just nuts right there that the the detail i'm gonna have to be careful when painting these so that i don't like glob the paint on there too much and make all of the the detail dis no, <clears throat> I can't speak. You know, you gotta love it when you just kind of choke on your own spit. Let me let me start over. I hope I'm going to be able to paint this helmet properly and not just 
cover up all this epic detail. I mean, that's just, that blows my mind right there because, yes, Mega has fine detail like that, but it's always a little bit soft. This is like razor sharp, razor sharp. Alrighty, here's the Halo 2 ODST helmet. Now this one doesn't really work on this armor because the back bumps it and so it's not actually like down on the neck. But that's fine. This is not really made to be on a Spartan anyway. This is 100% an ODST. Look at the visor. Got the little light attachment up there. My camera focus on the detail on the head. Oh, just barely. There's lots of detail there. The shaping is excellent. Oh, there's even like little contour lines in the back here. That's really nice. And this is something that Mega has never done. And I don't know if they ever will do. I feel like Mega's style would be color a normal ODST in the kind of color scheme of the Halo 2 and call it a Halo 2 ODST. So this one is definitely one that's worth getting because it's like I said it's something we probably will never see in mega form now this one this helmet is actually going to be going to a customizer in the squad 45 discord who goes by busters 2005 he does really really cool customs and he's like a huge ODST fan so I'm gonna send this one to him and see what he can do with it because I definitely could not do this helmet justice with the paint. Here is the just base ODST helmet, the normal one, but I feel like normal is a little bit of, I don't know, it doesn't properly describe just how nice and clean this helmet is. We've got all the chin detail, all the lines, which I know quite well at this point from staring at my big ODST helmet. So the, the details from like a big life-size prop translated down to this size it's still just as sharp now i grabbed my rookie because i wanted to bring in the mega constructs official odst helmet so that you can kind of see the difference the visor is the biggest difference just right off the bat just how much sharper and more angled it is which again i love the mega constructs odst stuff but it's just not as accurate you can see on the top, you can kind of see what I was saying about like Mega's detail being there as nice fine detail, but it's also a little soft on the edges. Whereas this print is not soft in the slightest. It's all like razor sharp edges. That's really cool. Oh, you know what? It would be kind of cool to paint a ODST using this helmet with the color scheme that I'm trying to go for for my big armor. That would be pretty cool. Here is the like flashlight attachment version of the helmet. That's the only attachment that this one has. Uh, but like I said, normal helmets, very cool. Helmets with attachments, even better. So this one has all of the detail of the one we just saw, but this time it has a flashlight. Now, it looks like there's some... like extra lines or something on the side that the other ones well maybe the other ones did have it oh no it didn't I think that's just the way the the grain of the plastic is you can see that sometimes with these custom molded parts but yeah that's that's really cool but again that's not the best it can get look at that that is the best it can get well almost so this time we have some more lights or something on the side, and then we have like a big extra armor plate on the visor. That's really cool. This one to me looks like it would go on a Spartan just because of how bulky it is. And honestly, it looks good on this like reach base armor too. So gosh dang it, I'm going to have a hard decision of which helmet to use first. Look at that. That's, that's fantastic. Looks good from all angles. But the, there's one more. There is one more. And I don't know. Maybe it's the best one. Let's see. So this right here is the helmet that like Romeo uses. 
except all of the like targeting apparatus is folded down. Now, I didn't actually know that this could happen. I thought that it would just kind of stay up as like a some sort of extra equipment up there. But apparently it will fold down for sniping and it looks really, really cool folded down. It's like ODST fused with a Gungnir helmet and it's a it's a fantastic mix. It's probably going to be a beyond my abilities to paint properly because look at that. The visor comes up underneath. But that just looks so cool. And I'm just imagining like the, the little eye pieces painted red or something. That'll be really nice. Um, this one, I don't know if this one has a slightly different mold on the back. But it feels like it bumps up the, against the armor a little bit more than the other ones did. So this one I think definitely should go on an ODST armor base because ODST armor doesn't come up the back uh, like the Spartan armor does. Now let's take a look at this pile of weapons. First of all, here is the Cinder Shot. Maybe also it's the Heat Wave. I'm not sure, but it looks really, really nice. I mean, I, I feel like I keep saying that, but that's the best way I can describe it. These are so sharp. Look, we even have like a little trigger area right here, but he's put some like thinner plastic in there where the trigger hole would be so that this is not fragile, which I think was a great idea. Got some nice front detail. On the top here, there's like these vent type sections, which is really nice. When the light hits it, there's all the like mechanical stuff in there. Very cool. And this is one we haven't seen from Mega yet. And I don't know, we might see it. I feel like it's it's possible, but at the same time, I don't know. So this could be one of those things that Mega just never touches. Go ahead and put in this guy's hand. Now, I was told by LS3D that he makes his handles smaller than usual. So look, it's going to kind of flop in his hand. That's on purpose. It's not an issue. That's on purpose so that you can paint the handle and still click it into the figure's hand without worrying about scratching the paint. So that's that's a pretty good idea in my opinion. Um, I am always wary about trying to paint handles or really anything that gets friction. So I'm curious to see if that idea works. Very, very nice. Looks like it sizes pretty well to a figure. Here is our sniper rifle. You know, what, let me just move that off to the side so it's not going to be distracting. Sniper rifle and the amount of detail on here is just stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Now, I don't think the stand here moves. I'm not going to try pushing it too hard because I don't want to break it. But that's fine. I mean, how often do we really use things like this sniper rifles in this position? Like, it's cool, but I can live with it not moving. Got the scope on there. Looks really nice. All the detail is super, super sharp. The barrel has like the little side vent pieces. Pretty cool. And then I have the Series 15 Norn Fang here. You can see LS3D's version is a lot bulkier in the midsection. Just makes it look like a more powerful gun overall. Um, I don't know exactly which one is more accurate because I haven't looked super, super close at the sniper rifle. I also don't know which game this version of the sniper rifle is based on, but I think it looks pretty cool regardless of what version it was based on. There it is in the figure's hand. And I'd say it's properly scaled. I mean, it's almost as big as the Spartan and that's usually how they look. Um, let's see, let's let's get the DMR next. This is another one we looked at in a flustered custom video, but that was an old version. So this is the newer version. It's a lot more straight. We saw the the one in the, the flustered custom video. It was kind of bent, and that was because it was an older print, and this has been like completely updated. So it's a lot sharper. We have like a little light attachment off on the side which is pretty cool. 
And then we've got a bunch of detail in there, all the kind of iconic stuff about the DMR, especially like when I think of the DMR, this little section right here with all the little like diamonds, that's a big part of the DMR when I look at it. And this captures it very well. But let's see, how's it compared to Megas? So this DMR is a lot chunkier. And I think that's a good thing. So Mega has two versions of the DMR. There's like the this version with the actual guard on the front of the hand, uh, the front of the handle. And then there's the bigger one that doesn't have that. And it's like really chunky and has a rail on the top. This one right here looks to me like a fusion of the two. And I think that's pretty cool. I like both of Mega's. I, I do like the really big one that Mega has. That's the one that um, the new lock figure comes with. But this one, it feels more accurate. And I'll probably honestly use this one. If I end up going with this helmet, I'll probably use this weapon to go with it as well. Because, I mean, look at that. That just looks, that looks really nice. That's a really nice pairing. And again, the handle is smaller to allow for paint. That's really cool. Now, we have a couple more. So here is the Magnum. And the Magnum, the Magnum actually, the handle is not loose at all, which is fine because I was thinking of using this Magnum, like painting it and not painting the handle or just using some Sharpie to kind of change the color. So I'm fine with it not being real loose. The amount of detail on here is not showing up fully because it's farther away from the camera. But look at this. So here is Megas. I mean, I like Megas. It's fine. It's a good piece. But it just looks like a toy next to this one. And look, the barrel even has a little hole instead of Megas, which is just like a line or something. That's excellent. I, I may end up buying some more of these in the future because like these would look fantastic for dual wielding and stuff it just looks like a powerful little gun i don't know maybe i'll use this one as this dude's weapon decisions ah, i'm not gonna be able to choose then we have the plasma rifles i'm holding them upside down because i'm just used to putting them in the figure's hands like that so the plasma rifles they have all of the detail that they need to have but they're small. So look at this. It's small. And then here is Megas. It's this giant chunky thing, which I'm going to be honest, this has never been my favorite Mega Constructs weapon. It just always looked weird and you have to put it on upside down. And then they made them squishy and I don't like it squishy. But this looks really cool. This looks properly sized. Oh, and I just realized we don't have this extra little... So Mega puts this extra little piece of plastic in here, I guess, for support. We don't have that at all, which is great. And then we can do a... Pull a Sesa and have two of them dual wielding. And these actually look decent dual wielded. Um, the Mega one does not look decent dual wielded. It looks like they're holding just too much. It's just chaos. But this actually looks pretty darn cool. That's pretty, pretty epic. I'm also tempted to paint these in banished colors. I don't know why. That was just my first thought when I saw them. Now, last but not least, we have Emil's Kukri knife in the sheath. Look at this. Pop. There's the knife. We can have our Spartan hold it. And then the sheath is its own piece and it has this little kind of block section which is where you would like glue it on like that i'm not sure where i will stick this yet if it'll be on this figure or another one but you could put it on like the thigh if you wanted to you could put it on the shoulder armor now you might want to sand down the block a little bit to make it sit more flush with the armor but it's nice to have some options and the fact that it just the knife goes in and stays in look at that slides right in and i don't feel like i'm gonna shake the knife loose on accident it's in there pretty solidly 
that is pretty cool. I'm not sure why Mega hasn't done this because clearly it's possible. I guess maybe they didn't want to bother with it or whatever. But yeah, that's really cool. We saw something similar, I think, on one of on G Customs Creations, um, Emil. But this one is just readily available for you to buy and just attach onto any Spartan you want. You could get it, stick it onto an Emil. You could put it on your own custom Spartan. I mean, who wouldn't want a knife and a removable sheath for their custom Spartan? That's just too cool. Well, there you have it. That is a bundle of LS3D custom printed parts. Now, I say we're going to do a giveaway. And I'll put that in the title and everything. So when you're watching this video, you already know that there'll be a giveaway in here. But that's a lot of helmets right there. So this one's going to go off to Buster. So he's going to paint that. Um, but there's still a lot of helmets here. And I'm not going to be able to paint all of them. Or I could, but not in any sort of timely manner. They would probably sit for a while. A handful of them would. A handful of them are going to get painted pretty soon. But some of them would just wait a while and not get painted. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pick a couple of these out. And... We'll give them away. So, let's see. I'll do two places in the giveaway. There'll be a first place. And first place will get... First place will get... The Mark V helmet with the attachment on the top. Like that. And a plasma rifle. Okay? So that's first place. And then, second place... Second place, we will do one of the normal Mark Fives. So, if you want to win these, here's what you have to do. In the description, I will have a link to a Gleam contest widget. Just click that, go there, and all the instructions will be right there waiting for you. There will also be a link to LS3D store if you want to just go ahead and buy some and not wait to see if you win, which I would suggest doing. Because he's got a lot of really, really cool stuff on there. But yeah, so first place will be this helmet with the attachment and the plasma rifle. Second place will be the just Mark V helmet. And yeah, good luck, guys. And once again, huge thanks to LS3D for sending these to me. I'm really excited to start painting this dude and see how he turns out. I just have to decide on a color scheme. I think I've decided that I'm going to use this helmet and use the Magnum for the first dude. I think I want to do a custom ODST at some point, but this guy will be first. So, I don't know. You guys want to let me know in the comments what kind of color scheme you think I should make him? That would be pretty cool. And I will be um, recording when I paint, so there will be a video about the painting process. So keep your eyes out for that. And yeah... Go ahead, hit that link in the description, enter the giveaway, and hit the link in the description and go check out LS3D's store because there's a lot of stuff that you don't want to miss out on. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.